honored to have Dr. Monica Burns join us on the EdTech Lounge. Uh, Dr. Burns is a curriculum and EdTech consultant, Apple distinguished educator, author and founder of ClassTechTips.com. And during her tenure as a classroom teacher, Monica used iPads to create differentiated learning experiences that started ClassTechTips.com to provide a resource for educators and administrators on implementing ed tech in the classroom. And she's recently published a book called For Hashtag Formative Tech. And yeah, the book's on Kindle, so I always love seeing the, the digital version as well. What was your story of kind of getting to, to this point? It was right at the beginning of bringing iPads into schools. And so Apple Education here in New York, they had asked me to come and speak at an event that they were holding for teachers to just kind of let them know what was going on <laughs> with iPads. Uh, New York State was having a little bit of trouble figuring out what it even meant to buy apps if you were a school. It was that early on. And so I came to share a whole bunch of my favorite free apps. And so when I walked in, instead of it just being, you know, a couple of teachers to hang out with and talk to, it ended up being a few hundred. And so I had the chance to show up and share some of the things that were happening in my classroom. And that's when people started asking, you know, what's your blog? What's your Twitter handle? And I didn't have answers to those questions. I was teaching uh, grade five uh, in New York City, and it, that was not something that I saw uh, as an important part of, of my day until I realized what a wonderful community was out there. You know, the iPads, they, they really have uh, like kind of a multi-touch interface or a natural user interface. Do you notice um, the ways that they're being used as, as quite different? One of the things that's so special about a tablet like an iPad is that you can really be on the move. The movement happening right now with so much more uh, voice to text technology I think will really change the way we think about needing a keyboard all the time for interesting. everything, interesting. Um, which is interesting too. But it's for me the big difference when I talk to schools that are making decisions is, right, how do we want students to interact with their spaces um, as they're moving around, exploring new content, you know, if they can use a tablet while they're out, you know, in a community garden and capture their learning in a way that they couldn't with the Chromebook, well, that might be something to factor into your decision making. The, the next billion internet users are going to be much <laughs> more interested in using uh, natural interfaces. Where do you see things going in terms of where, like, the devices that people will use for learning? When Google Glass came out, it was really exciting to think about what the possibilities there right. were for that type of wearable technology. <laughs> and I think wearables are, are here to stay in different formats. It's a matter of getting uh, more content ready uh, for different types of devices as they come down the line. You know, the movement towards having more robust voice to text technology, more video interaction, you know, really comes down to leveling the playing field for people who may not have the traditional type of literacy skills when we think of being able to read and comprehend content and write and tell their story. I'm curious as to, well, what makes a good education app? Like, what is something that, you know, is the, the key determinant to say, yep, this app is really great. You, you should be using this one. That's such an important question, and I'm glad that you asked it. Um, it's something that I think a lot about, and I'm a really big fan of open-ended creation tools or tools that, you know, there's, of course, there's a, a purpose, and we all love our, our games and moving through levels and yes. earning badges, right? Of course, so I'm not dismissing that at all. I just like to put a little bit of emphasis on the open-ended creation tools where there isn't a set pathway where teachers can start moving kids in different directions, but then give them the space to really run with it. How do you get feedback about the creative process? Right? How do we take the traditional rubric and the traditional task, but then make sure we're bringing in components that um, elevate the experience and connect to relevant, transferable skills we want students to, to have. Not just telling students that they need to speak clearly or that they need to right. use that tone in their voice to connect with their audience, but that we're showing them great examples of that in action. What's the most common uh, types of questions that people might have or types of requests that they might have that uh, they, they uh, would typically ask you for? How am I creating opportunities for collaboration that's more than just I'm on one Google Doc, you're on another Google Doc, right? But right. that we're really talking and having high-level conversations. What do you think is the most, um, the advice that you've given that's kind of made the biggest impact on classrooms? But the idea that we can use technology tools to capture voice and that voice counts 
as a way of explaining thinking as opposed to writing sentences uh, is, is something that I think resonates really well when I talk to teachers. So maybe they're conversationally proficient um, in the language, yet they are not able to write proficiently and then they you know they lose their confidence that becomes a hang-up don't really get a clear picture of what it is that they understand uh, the voice aspect of you know, tablets and computers is huge students can explain you know what it is that they were thinking when they saw this math problem or they might pull up explain everything on a Chromebook and sketch out something and talk about their process and that gives a that gives teachers a, a clear a clearer picture than maybe someone who would struggle to compose a few sentences and that would get in the way of them showing what they know. Have you recommended processes for these schools to use voice and evaluate voice? Teachers can set up a prompt and then give students, you know, 30 seconds to respond using voice and video so kids can log in with a pin and the question the teacher might push out might be, right, what's one way that your character changed over the course of your book? Maybe it's a routine that happens once a week as an alternative to like an exit slip. The Seesaw students can snap a picture of their activity sheet that you've always used with right. them, right? And instead of um, just handing that in and putting it, you know, in a pile of papers for just the teacher's eyes to see, students can go through that same process that students have always done in a classroom, yet they can now snap a picture of it record their voice and maybe even circle something or write something on their screen. They also have a parent component too. And in my book, Informative Tech, I talk about you know how it's not just gathering information for teachers to see, yeah. but also to have productive conversations and open conversations with families. What's the, the key message that uh, people should know about Formative Tech? making sure that it's meaningful, sustainable, and scalable. And so meaningful uh, so that it counts, right? We're using it not because it's cool or it's new, but because it really serves a purpose for, for student learning and for a teacher understanding of where kids are at. And then making sure that it's sustainable so it becomes part of a regular routine. Maybe it's those video exit slips every Thursday. And then also making sure that it's scalable so that if something great is happening in one or two corners of a school we're celebrating it you also run a site called uh, class tech tips do you have like a particular area of content that you find that people resonate with most you get more comments you get more feedback on early on I did a few different posts on Google Cardboard in the classroom right. and so those just I think um, people were starting to search and look and be curious. So those are some posts that really jumped out this year um, because there's not a lot of content, um, or there wasn't you know, six months ago, there's more now. So things that are free, easy to get started with, but then also kind of spark people's imagination tend to be the more popular posts on the site. I, I worry that a lot of virtual reality is kind of, it, it just moves into the content that some professional has made because it's so hard to make 3D content, but maybe things have changed. Like have you There's lots of great places to go to get content. Uh, the Daily 360 from New York Times is wonderful, uh, lots of videos there. Nearpod has 360 images embedded within Discovery Channel. You can still probably grab all their Shark Week content and videos uh, there that are 362. I use the Insta360. It's probably the lowest price point. Um, it's under $200 in terms, and it's just so easy to use. Um, you plug it into your iPhone. I think they have an Android one too or you can get a SIM card and just kind of walk around holding it. Yeah. And it lets you capture pretty high quality 360 video. And I just handed my phone with the camera to the kids and said, yeah. go capture some video. Yeah. And so it was so different than the video I was capturing because I was so worried about holding my hands steady, walking around at a, a you know, a very cautious kind of pace right. um, with them. They just went for it. And so they were, you know, down on the ground talking to their friends about what kind of activity they were doing. They were walking around at all different speeds and different angles. And so giving students that opportunity to capture VR content mm -hmm. uh, is a great way to think about their perspective. It's really neat to see the creative potential of even using this new medium and how it gets people excited. If our audience wants to learn a little bit more about yourself or they wanted to read your books, what's the best way to get access to that? Yeah, heading over to classtechtips.com is where you'll find all of that information. So if you go to classtechtips.com slash sign up, 
all of that my favorites will come to your inbox on Mondays. Well, thank you so much for for your time. I really appreciate this conversation that we've had. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right.